This video will cover inclusion and exclusion criteria. These are essential components of your literature review and you should detail them carefully when writing up your methodology and developing your research question. The purpose of inclusion and exclusion criteria in a literature review is to help the researcher select relevant studies that meet specific requirements for the review. The inclusion criteria specify the characteristics or qualities that a study must possess in order to be included in the review. In comparison, the inclusion exclusion criteria specify the characteristics or qualities that would disqualify a study from being included. Think of a tap that controls the flow of water. When you turn the tap on, you can adjust the flow of water to either increase or decrease the amount that comes out. In this analogy, the tap represents the literature search and the flow of water represents the number of studies that you find. When you design inclusion and exclusion criteria for a literature review, you are adjusting the flow of studies that you include in your review. Inclusion criteria are like turning the tap to increase the flow of studies that meet specific criteria. Exclusion criteria, on the other hand, are like turning the tap to decrease the flow of studies. And just like adjusting the tap to control the flow of water, this allows you to control the flow of the studies that you include in your review. This helps you focus on the most relevant and appropriate studies for your research question, whilst minimising the amount of irrelevant or low quality studies that you will have to sift through. This helps increase the overall credibility and reliability of your research findings and ensures that the conclusions drawn from the literature are based on high quality, relevant studies. There are key steps I want you to think about when developing your inclusion and exclusion criteria. Firstly, you need to determine the time period that you'll cover in your search. This will vastly help you narrow down the number of studies that you need to review. It's common to go back five years. Um, that would be what we'd consider re recent or up-to-date research. However, you may need to go back further and that's fine as long as you can justify it. You must pilot test your criteria. Once you've developed these inclusion and exclusion criteria, it's important that you test them on a small sample of studies to see if they are appropriate and effective. And you may need to go back to the drawing board and think, these are a little bit too narrow or these are too broad. I'm getting too many studies to review. I'm not getting enough. And based on this, you'll need to refine your criteria to ensure that they are as appropriate and effective as they can be. Now we'll work through an example. And I've chosen the question, what are the effects of mindfulness-based interventions on stress reduction in healthcare workers in the UK? So we can think of some of our inclusion criteria. So remember these are the characteristics or qualities that an individual study must possess in order to be included in your review. You might want to pause the video now and see if you can think of any. So if we think back to our question, which is what are the effects of mindfulness-based interventions on stress reduction in healthcare workers in the UK? We definitely want to find studies that include a mindfulness-based intervention, and we probably need to think about what that actually looks like as well. Our population that we were interested in was healthcare workers, so one of our inclusion criteria should be that those studies focus on healthcare workers, as opposed, for example, to service users. We were interested in if this intervention reduced stress amongst our healthcare workers. So studies that report on stress reduction as an outcome is something we should include. And finally, we were interested in healthcare workers in the UK. So one of our inclusion criteria is that we look for studies that take place in the UK. Now, research that has been undertaken in the UK might be limited. So you may, for example, need to widen this out and you might need to look at studies that are published in 
or studies that took place in high income countries or countries with a socialised healthcare system so that there is some comparison with the UK. And on the other side, we have our inclusion criteria. So these are the characteristics or qualities that would disqualify a study from being included. You can pause the video again and see how many you can get. So studies that use interventions other than mindfulness-based interventions should be disqualified. We don't want to muddy the waters. We want our review to be what we call homogeneous, which means the studies in it are very similar. We don't want to be looking at lots of different types of interventions. We're not going to be able to draw good conclusions from this. Sometimes your exclusion criteria will be the inverse of your inclusion criteria. So, of course, we don't want to look at studies uh, that focus on populations other than healthcare workers. We don't want to look at studies that don't report on stress as an outcome. And we don't want to look at studies outside of the UK. These are just a few examples to give you an idea of how inclusion and exclusion criteria might be developed for a literature review. You may also need to consider studies that are published in the English language, depending on your translator abilities. And it's also really important to tailor your criteria to your specific research question and keep refining through pilot testing and feedback from your colleagues and your advisors. So in summary, inclusion and exclusion criteria are key to your literature review. If you can define them and nail them down, they will help you sort and refine your literature. You want to use them as a filter during your database searches. And this will mean that you can find a group of similar studies that will help you answer your research question.